So I thought I'd shoot a video today about this MTD lawn tractor that I picked up for free recently. Great price. But uh, like a lot of free things, they end up costing money uh, eventually. Uh, it wouldn't start, wouldn't run, and the owner just wanted it out of their garage, so I took it home. Um, I was able to get it running by doing a valve adjustment. There's lots of videos online about that. Put new blades, new spindles on it. And uh, I'm at the stage now where I am replacing the belts. So this is an MTD 15.5 horsepower, 42 inch. It is a series, 600 series. I saw a few videos online about replacing belts on uh, lawn tractors like this, but none of them seem to be exactly the same as mine, so I thought I'd shoot a video here. So, I've already done a lot of this, I've already loosened off a lot of things, and then I thought, well, let's shoot a video now, it might be a little easier. So, you lift this tray out of here, for your battery, and we got a couple pulleys under here. First step is to remove this pulley here, and with the upper transmission belt and then underneath here is a lower transmission belt with what's called the variable speed pulley here. So, and even my manual, the instructions in my manual were a little different and referred to a couple parts that I don't seem to have so unless I'm missing parts but anyway so to remove this pulley here uh, I put a a punch in there to keep this from spinning and then it's a 7 8 socket on top there might need a, uh, a universal to fit in there and a longer extension than I have but I was able to work with this so crank that out of there 7 8 socket like I said I've already loosened a lot of this it actually came apart fairly easy I was kind of impressed wasn't too seized up. So that pulley comes off of there. You'll see there's a, uh, a star pattern on the pulley. Kind of similar to the blades. So that comes off of there. You can see you've got the matching star pattern on the on the drive part here. So now this upper transmission belt will come off. That comes off like that. And then I was a bit worried about this part here. I was a bit stymied and this seems to be where mine is different than some of the other ones. So you've got this variable speed pulley here um, with a pulley in the center I guess you'd call it that slides up and down. and. Um, you can't get the belt off of that because there are these tabs here that uh, on either side you can't see the other one but so you can't just you might be able to actually now that it's loose you could probably you might be able to force that off but I don't think so it'd be really hard to get the new belt on so in order to get that off I was able to do it without taking the deck off but I think it would be easier if you're inclined to take the deck off. So you can see underneath here and when I first started looking at this I wasn't too sure whether you should take you know there's three bolts around the outside here I wasn't sure if you should take those three bolts off or this one but uh, it turns out that it's this one and don't even think about undoing some of the springs that hold this on I read about a few people trying that to take the whole assembly apart. So you can see this spring here and this bracket. This is all part of the variable speed pulley. So some people removed this spring and then just uh, undid this bolt to pull the whole assembly apart. And that spring goes all the way to the back here and is a uh, and that is a nightmare apparently to get that spring back together again. So I stayed away from that. I didn't touch that. Just came under here and uh, 
You'll have to find a way to hold the pulley because otherwise it will start spinning. That's the only problem. But if you can hold that pulley steady, and again mine wasn't too tight, so I was able to get this bolt loosened pretty quickly. Take that out of there, the washer. And what I used was um, No, I didn't use that, sorry. I used the vice grips. That's what I did on top here. I was able to grab this top with a pair of vice grips, clamp that on there, probably this way, so that it would just spin and, and lock off against the side of the chassis over here. So yeah, so I clamped that on there, that kept the pulley from spinning, and then I was able to just, it just lifts straight out. Just lifts right out. <laughs> there it goes. A little hard with one hand in the camera. So there, come on, focus. Come on. There we go. Okay. There is your variable speed pulley. Like I said, I have had this apart. Uh, so this should slide freely up and down. I was a bit worried that this was seized. Uh, mine wasn't too bad. I did clean it up a little bit. I may. I shot a video earlier when I was doing that. Uh, so I just used some WD-40 and some brake cleaner to clean, clean that up. And then I put some dry graphite lube in there. Um, so that's in good shape. So that's it for the back end. It's not too bad. And then you keep an eye on where your belt feeds through because it goes all the way to the front of the engine. And attaches up here to this pulley assembly. This is the belt for the blades, which fits onto the bottom one, and then the top one here is the uh, main uh, trans upper, what do we call this? this is the lower transmission belt. Okay, in order to get this uh, pulley assembly off here, I'm using a trick I learned online from Terrell Dactyl. I'll put a link to his video in uh, the description. But uh, this works really well. I've already done a little bit on it here and loosened it off. Sorry, I had to move the camera so I could s couldn't see what the hell was going on. Uh, so what I've done, uh, like I said, I learned a trick I learned from Pterodactyl. Yeah, it worked really well. I've got the bolt in here. There's a washer. And you can see if the camera focuses maybe. I just drilled a little divot in the end of the bolt so that the air chisel would fit in there without slipping off. It still slips off once in a while. But, uh, 
if you don't have one of these, maybe you can borrow one or buy one. Uh, they're not too expensive. Get yourself one of those. This I'm impressed, man. This worked really well. And that loosened that right off. And it's coming off here now, sort of. Enough to get the belt off anyway. So I may just leave it like that. I'll see if I can pull it off the rest of the way. Let's see, but that's the main uh, the main thing we wanted was to get that. belt off there yeah, that doesn't seem to want to move Feels like it's hitting at the back here, but oh shit, that's a knuckle buster. Be careful. Anyway, we got her off. So yeah, without the air chisel, not too sure that would have been a real pain in the ass to get off. You see, it's kind of rusty in there. So I think I'll clean that up and put a little bit of Never Seize on there. And uh, oh, there's a some kind of bushing or something up in here too. So. Keep track of your parts, which way they go on, so you can get them back together again. Okay, I got this pulley assembly off, cleaned it all up inside. I've uh, got some anti seize on the shaft and on the bolt. And I've got my new blade, uh, my new belts ready to go. So these are the belts for my machine. If you're ordering belts, make sure you double check and make sure the uh, you get the right belts for your machine. Yours may be different than these ones. Uh, I found these on eBay, got a good deal. Uh, I found a seller in Quebec that had this one for 15 bucks and this one for 10, and uh, with good shipping too and fast. Uh, so I saved myself some money there. Uh, check uh, some other Amazon had a had a pair for about 50 bucks, which was the next best price. Otherwise, you go into the retail store, you might pay 40 or 50 bucks a piece for these things. So, um, so I'm ready to go here. Just gonna set the camera down while I feed this new belt through. Okay, I got the. Get the belt fed through there. There is a, you can see there's a keyway in the shaft and a key on this part here. Oh, let's get my bushing in there first. In there. Not too bad. That's about it for the front. To make sure your uh, your belt is a uh, where the heck are we? Is in there properly? I don't know if you can see this or not, but pretty dark under here. Sorry about that. I don't have any lights under here. Uh, there is like a there's like a bolt or something there to keep the belt from slipping off. There's one of these on each side. There's the other one. So just make sure your belt's on the inside of those and not on the outside, and uh, you should be good to go. So that's the front belt. And we'll go around to the back, and we'll put the. Here's my belt here.
tripod will stay there. Maybe. I don't know if grease is a good idea on this or not. Uh, definitely don't want any grease on the inside there. But I thought a little grease down here probably won't hurt. Might attract dust and whatnot, but this fits inside the bearing on the bottom. So we'll just use a little bit of that. Can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Geez, that belt feels really, really loose, but I guess that's about right. It's in the parking brake position right now, so. So, upper belt now, upper transmission belt. That around there. Put this camera down. Boy, that's really tight. What's going on here? Maybe I need to put it in gear. There we go. Okay, yep. So, once we put it into gear, that's going to move the Still not close. Okay, so I ran into some problems with the reassembly there. And uh, unfortunately I ran out of uh, daylight and time, so I didn't uh, shoot the reassembly, but it should be fairly straightforward. If you've taken it all apart, you should be able to get it back together again, so I apologize for that. But uh, where I ran into problems was I had put the front belt on first, and then uh, I put the, tried to put the back belt on, but with the new belts it was too tight and I just could not pull uh, this pulley over into position. Uh, I had done the reassembly a couple times with the old belts uh, before I started shooting the video to make sure I had the procedure down. There was no problem with the old belts, but they were obviously stretched and had uh, uh, provided a lot more play to reassemble things with the old stretched belts, but the new belts are much, much tighter and I couldn't get it back together so I think uh, the proper procedure would be to uh, put the front belt on the lower portion of the variable speed pulley so in here so get that on get the uh, the upper transmission belt on the variable speed pulley and then this is what I was able to uh, put this pulley back on no problem so with the front part of the lowered transmission belt was still detached from the motor so as the final part of the assembly come back here and reattach this pulley assembly onto the bottom of the motor and that uh, worked no problem and then uh, the final thing is to pull the belt for the blades back onto the bottom and that was no problem as well. So that's the procedure. I just had it a little bit backwards. So everything's back together now. 
haven't uh, tried it yet but uh, that's the next step so I'll be putting the battery back in and taking it for a ride well I just took it for a spin and uh, it was running good the belts are definitely working but I got a new problem as soon as I parked it the gas was just pouring out here out this hose on the side of the carburetor for the uh, the PCV, the positive crankcase ventilation, and gas is just pouring out of there. So, it's not one thing, it's another. My free lawn tractor. It's not looking like such a good deal anymore, so I'm just going to get the vice grips on here and pinch that fuel line off. So, I believe what's happening is, from what I've read online, is uh, one of the needle valves in here is not working anymore and it's not so the gas just keeps flowing because the gas tanks up here it's gravity fed it's higher than the engine so the gas just keeps flowing and then what happens is it can back up through this hose into the crankcase and your uh, oil gets full of gas and then apparently too, sometimes uh, the this gets full of gas. The gas flows down the intake as well into the, the cylinder. I guess if your intake valve is open, so the next time you go to start it, you've got gas in the cylinder and gas in the crankcase, and sometimes the the whole bloody engine can just uh, explode. There's a video someone else shot online showing the crankcase just busted open right here and that's what happened. So, that's not good. So, I think I looked online for rebuild kits and it's actually cheaper to just buy a replacement carburetor off of Amazon. It was less than 20 bucks. So I think I'm just going to order a new carb. So that might be my next video. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hope you found something uh, useful here. Feel free to share any comments or questions. And keep an eye out for the next video. Cheers.